Hey everyone, it's Max here from Australian Vaporizers and today we're going to be having a look at the new CFX Portable Vaporizer by Boundless. The portable vape market is growing every day, which is really cool. Recently though, we're starting to see a lot more familiar designs being, let's say, reimagined. Some are good, some are not so good. So here we have the Mighty and the Crafty by Stores and Bickle. Two of the best portables available at the moment and you'll probably be familiar with them if you're into vaping. Now here's the Boundless CFX and its little brother, the CF. Both of the smaller options here use preset temperatures and are geared towards discretion, and the larger versions have more battery life with full temperature control via a screen. I was understandably skeptical of these two units when I first saw them, but I probably shouldn't have been too quick to judge. They're not exactly high-end units like the Crafty and the Mighty, but they are about half the price and have some really cool features. Just how similar are they though? Well, today we're going to have a closer look at the CFX to find out. First of all, here we have the kit. Packaging's pretty nice. So if I can get this thing open... There we are. So here's the unit itself. It's not exactly discreet, but like the Mighty, there's no parts that need to be carried separately, apart from the charger, that is. The first thing that grabbed me about this unit is the massive OLED screen on the front here. It's probably the biggest and brightest display I've seen on a portable. Great for visibility, not so great for discretion though. Then of course we have the standard power and temp control buttons, a familiar style of swivel mouthpiece, and this whole assembly is held in place by a bayonet fitting similar to the Mighty and the Crafty. Underneath this we've got a huge filling chamber. Look at the size of this. With most other portables, it'd probably take you about two or three sessions to vape this much. The question is, is this actually a feature? Initially, I was worried about efficiency, which we'll talk about a bit later, but I can say the results were surprising. Last but certainly not least, we've got our charge ports on here. That's right, I said ports, plural. One micro USB and one standard mains input. This is definitely one of the coolest features I've seen in a while, but more on that later. Overall, I'd say the CFX feels pretty well made. Nice rubberized finish on the outside and a sleek mouthpiece design. As far as materials go, it is made primarily from high temp plastic, but it's nice to see a ceramic lined filling chamber here. The display is really nice of course, but the button feedback doesn't really feel the greatest. I'm being fairly picky here though. Aside from that, we've got a stainless steel screen in the bottom as well as a replaceable stainless steel top filter. The screens are more of a punched plate than a mesh, similar to that of the Flower Mate, so they're super durable and easy to clean. Setting the unit aside for a second, let's see what else we've got here. Stock standard instruction manual, a micro USB charge cable, a wall charge cable, One stainless steel pod for concentrates. A cleaning brush. And a packing tool. The CFX comes ready to use, so apart from a dry run to burn off any factory materials from the element, there's really nothing more you need to do to set it up. It's good practice to run any new vape at its maximum temp for about 5 to 10 minutes after you unbox it. With this unit, I'd be inclined to push that out a bit further to around 15 minutes if possible. I'll explain why a little bit later on. To switch the unit on, press the power button 5 times in a row. The first thing you'll notice is this awesome colour display. You'll also notice that the unit has a vibration feedback for powering on and reaching the set temp. The CFX shuts off automatically after 5 minutes, so you'll have to start it back up again a couple of times to complete the burn off. You could do this just by holding the power button down rather than pressing it 5 times. Try and keep an eye on it though as this unit doesn't vibrate when it shuts off automatically, which can get kind of annoying. While we're on the subject of automatic shut off though, here's something a little more unique. You can actually monitor how far along you are in the session via this little meter on the display, which I think is pretty handy. Anyway, once you've run the unit through a few dry cycles, shut it down and let it cool off for a couple of minutes so you don't accidentally scorch your herb. 
After that, it's time to load this massive filling chamber. Boundless don't include any kind of filling chamber spacer, but don't be afraid to try smaller amounts. I have had decent success with really tiny loads, which is really surprising, but for best results I'd still probably recommend between 1 and 3 quarters full. After that you can reattach the mouthpiece assembly and switch the unit back on. The CFX has a really nice broad temperature range from 40 degrees to 220 degrees Celsius and can be adjusted by single degree increments. Somewhere between 175 and 200 is generally the sweet spot, but I'd be inclined to start off at the lower end of that range. Much like the Flowermate V5 series, the CFX has a super fast heat up time. It only takes about 20 seconds for the display to indicate that it's finished heating. In saying that though, I would definitely be waiting another 30 seconds at least before taking your first draw. From my experience, vapor production is really sparse when you get into it too quickly. So here's a demo sesh. Um, I was really hoping the boundless vapes would have little to no draw resistance, just like the Mighty. Unfortunately though, they're not as good as I was expecting in that department. Now I might be wrong, but I think the main reason for this is the top screen. It's pretty narrow and restrictive. I feel like if they made it a bit wider with a denser hole pattern, it might improve things. It could also have something to do with the intake on the bottom of the unit though, so I'm not entirely certain. At any rate, it still has slightly better airflow than most other portables at that same price point, so it's not that big of a deal, I suppose. Let's move on to vapor production, shall we? Quite pleased with it overall. As I mentioned earlier, you'd think that with such a huge filling chamber and no spacer, efficiency would be a problem. It really isn't, or at least nowhere near as much as I was expecting anyway. To put it into perspective for you, the vapor production is a lot better than the Flowermate V5 series, but not quite as good as the Ariza portables. The huge filling chamber does cater for larger amounts than most other units though, so that's something to keep in mind. The cooling capacity is quite good considering how short the mouthpiece is. Like most portables though, it starts to get a bit harsh once you hit the 190 to 195 degree point. This usually depends on the herb that you're using though. Taste is probably the CFX's biggest shortcoming. The unit produces a noticeable plastic flavour during the first few uses, hence the extended burn off I recommended earlier. It might even be worthwhile dismantling the cooling unit before the first use and soaking it in some hot water for like 15 minutes or so. Moving on to battery life, this unit uses two internal rechargeable lithium ion batteries which are not replaceable by the user. I was able to get roughly 5 to 7 10 minute sessions from a full battery which I'm 100% satisfied with. And as per usual, please note that this figure is completely dependent upon your set temperature, draw style and several other variables. I've noticed that the battery indicator tends to jump back and forth a little bit between the last two bars which makes it kind of tricky to gauge how much time you got left. Not exactly a deal breaker though. So, I want to talk about these dual charge inputs. Every vape owner I've spoken to seems to have a different opinion on which charge method's best for portables. With this unit, there are no compromises. You can just use whichever method you like. In my opinion, this should be a standard across all portables, hands down. Big fan, thumbs up. It really is a personal preference thing, but there's always this struggle between the convenience of micro USB versus the speed of wall chargers. If you're using the wall adapter, the CFX will charge in around 30 to 40 minutes. I am not sure how they managed to pull this one off, but who cares, it's super quick. The USB cable will slow it up a fair bit, but that's a given. If you're charging via a USB port on a PC or something similar, it'll take around 3 hours. Still so good to have that option though. If you're looking for a portable that can be used while charging, sadly the CFX isn't one of them. I mean, it is possible because I've tried it and it technically works, but when we open to the charging section of the manual, it clearly states, do not use the CFX while charging, this will cause damage to the device. Suppose I should have read that beforehand. Anyway, it would have been nice to see pass-through functionality officially supported by the manufacturer, but it probably won't bother you too much given how quickly it charges. 
Maintenance for the boundless portables is fairly average. If you use the included brush to dust out the chamber and the top screen after every session, you should only have to give it a thorough clean once every three to four weeks. The biggest problem is that there's no filling chamber spacer to filter out the solid debris like there is with the Mighty. Instead, it just builds up inside the top screen and the mouthpiece assembly. This means you'll be cleaning it a lot more often than you would with the Mighty, but luckily it's not that big of a mission to do it. The mouthpiece section can be taken apart and washed with isopropyl alcohol. I'd probably set aside the O-rings first, purely because I've had some bad experiences with silicon degradation when using ISO as a cleaning agent. Use an old toothbrush or something similar to give the parts a good scrub if necessary. Once you're done, you can just rinse everything under some warm water and leave it to dry. I found the top screen to be a little tricky to refit after cleaning it. To make the job a bit easier, use the back of your packing tool or the brush to hold the insert in place while you screw the screen back on. In regards to replacement parts, I'd say it'd be handy to have a spare mouthpiece assembly on hand just in case it gets blocked up, but it's not entirely necessary. So to sum things up, if you're looking for a mid-range portable with great battery life, full temperature control, and the flexibility to use whatever amount of material you like per session, to an extent at least, then the CFX is a great option. It's really refreshing to see units like these fill that void between the budget units like the Flowermate and the mid-range units like the Arisa Solo. It's still relatively new, so it's hard to make a judgement regarding long-term reliability, but it is covered by a two-year warranty, so that's reassuring. Now, if you're sensitive to taste, then I should warn you that the CFX might not tickle your fancy. Aside from the taste, though, there's only a few minor gripes I have with the unit, so overall, I'm really happy with it. If you've got any questions or anything you'd like to add, feel free to throw us a comment below, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is Maximum Australian Vaporizers. Have a good one.